I want to start this video by admitting something mildly embarrassing. When I first started building my first real project, not like a tutorial or a copy-paste lab, but something I actually cared about, I had no idea what version control actually was. I was building a plant watering web app. It was a simple idea. It had a Flask backend, HTML, CSS, Python, some JavaScript. I had a Raspberry Pi controlling relays and I was using real hardware and I had real consequences if I broke something. Every single time I made a change to this project, I saved it as a new folder. And no, I'm not kidding. I had names like plant app v1, plant app v2, plant app final, plant app final final, plant app final final real, plant app do not touch this one. It was absolute caveman behavior. And at the time I thought that I was being smart. I was like, hey, at least I'm not overwriting my own code, but eventually something broke. And I had no idea which version actually worked. And this was the moment where I realized like, man, this is really unsustainable. And that realization is what led me to Git. And eventually the understanding why Git is one of the most important tools in all of modern technology today. So this video exists because if you're a help desk person, sysadmin, cloud, cybersecurity, anyone who's ever touching code, Git is not optional. Git is how basically all modern work gets done. It's how things get saved. It's how things get replicated across different environments. It's very, very important. And I feel like most Git tutorials are just really abstract or maybe like instructor led. I mean, this is how I learned Git, but I never really had this moment of learning about Git until I actually experienced it in my own production. I really learned it the hard way. So what I wanna do in this video is show you why Git exists, which problems it actually solves, walk through some example workflows and convince you without the hype that learning Git will permanently level you up using my own mistakes early as proof. So before we talk about commands or branches or GitHub, which is actually something that's different from just Git, we need to talk about the problem because Git doesn't exist just because programmers like complexity. Git exists because software is fragile. Here's the truth about writing code. You change things constantly. You break things constantly. You forget what changed. You work across multiple machines. You probably wanna collaborate with other humans and you deploy in environments that behave completely differently. And without structure, that becomes chaos. That was why me saving my plant app as plant app final final v7, this one works, is crazy. I was trying to preserve history. I was trying to avoid breaking my production code. And I was also trying to give myself rollback options. So my instincts were correct, but my execution was absolutely terrible. Git is just the correct implementation of those instincts. So in plain English, Git is a version control system. But that phrase doesn't really help until you break it down. Git does primarily three things. It tracks changes to files over time. It lets you label meaningful states of your project, and then it allows multiple people or machines to concurrently work on the same code. That's it, it's not really magic, it's not AI, it's not some crazy cloud service. Fundamentally, it's a timeline for your code. Every time you commit, you're saying this is a snapshot worth remembering and Git remembers everything. So the real moment that Git clicked for me didn't happen when I first did Git commit. It happened when something broke and I didn't panic. I had refactored a part of my plant app, routes or the database or whatever. Suddenly my UI wasn't working, my Pi was not triggering relays and I had no idea what I broke. Old me would have done something crazy. I would have started digging through folders and new me just did Git status git log. I could literally see every change, every commit, every message I wrote to my past self. And then I remembered, I don't need to remember what I did. Git remembers it for me. Now this is when it stopped being a tool and it started becoming like infrastructure for my brain. So one of the most underrated ideas in Git is that commit messages are messages to your future self. A commit message is not just a save point. It's also communication. When you write a message like I fixed moisture sensor calibration bug, you're telling future you what changed, why it changed, and where to look if something breaks. Now this matters so much in real systems. If you think from the context of a sysadmin or a cloud engineer, infrastructure code changes, firewall rules, Terraform modules, scripts that touch production, Git turns I hope nothing breaks into accountability and traceability. Now one of the other superpowers that people don't appreciate enough is Git rollbacks. If you're touching production systems without the option to roll something back, you are living in a dangerous world. Git gives you the ability to revert bad changes, the ability to test risky ideas safely, and the ability to answer what changed instantly. When I realized I could Git check out an old commit and I could see my app exactly how I had it days ago, this felt illegal. Something just clicked in my brain and this alone for me was enough to learn Git. So then we have branches, how professionals avoid breaking everything. Again, before branches, my workflow was change things and hope things don't break. With branches, it became experiment without consequences. A branch is just a parallel timeline. You can test out features, rewrite logic, break everything, and then just throw it away if it sucks. And this is really huge for confidence. I stopped being scared to refactor and I stopped being scared to try new ideas, which is something that was very scary to me when I was first building out version 27 of my manually saved plant app. Git gave me the safety net where I could just 
try random stuff. And if it broke, I would just go back to my other branch. So then came my next realization that Git is not just for me. Git is how teams function and collaborate. Think about modern software. You have hundreds of engineers working on the same exact code base in a bunch of different time zones, either at the same time or at different times of the day. Git lets multiple people work independently, make changes safely, review each other's work, and then track responsibly. Even if you never work on a big team, this really matters because collaboration is important. Now, again, another life-changing Git moment for me was when I was editing on my MacBook, but the app ran on my Raspberry Pi. So before my workflow was completely awful, again, I'm editing the files, whatever, version 28. I'm copying the files. I'm SSHing them over to my Raspberry Pi. Again, I forgot what version was where and what was even going on. And then I learned Git push and Git pull. That was it. I could make changes on my MacBook. I could push them to GitHub, which is a repository storage, big database, basically, where you can store all of these files. And then I could pull them from GitHub, the source of truth, to my Raspberry Pi and vice versa. Again, Git became that bridge between environments. It was a really, really, really cool moment. And the thing that most people don't realize is that Git is not just for apps. Git underpins all of modern technology. Infrastructure as code, CI, CD pipelines, cloud deployments, configuration management, Terraform, it's stored in Git. Ansible playbooks, Git. Kubernetes manifests, Git. Git is the ultimate source of truth. If it's not in Git, it doesn't exist. And that mindset changes how you work. Now back to GitHub. Once you understand Git, GitHub makes sense instantly. But GitHub is not Git. GitHub is for hosting, collaboration, visibility, automation, and it turns your local machine into a shared platform. For your career, this matters a lot. A GitHub profile is proof you can build, proof that you can collaborate, proof you understand real workflows, and resumes say anything. GitHub shows proof. So again, ultimately learning Git doesn't just teach you new commands. It changes fundamentally how you work and opens up a, in my estimation, beautiful new world. You start to think in small, meaningful changes or reversible decisions. You document intent. You get to do safe experimentation. And that mindset transfers everywhere. It transfers to sysadmin work. It transfers to cloud architecture. It transfers to automation. It transfers to scripting. Git trains you to be deliberate. So what I would tell my past self is don't just memorize the commands, understand the concepts of Git. Commits are snapshots. Branches are timelines. Merges are history reconciliation. Remotes are shared sources. And then you have to use Git on real problems, on real projects. You got to make things, you got to break things, fix them, roll back, repeat it, collaborate. That's how Git's going to stick. Now, again, I didn't start with Git because I was smart. I started with Git for the exact opposite reason, because my system started falling apart and it's because my system was terrible. And honestly, that's the best way that you can learn. If you find yourself copying folders or emailing code to yourself or trying to do your own version control, Git is probably what you need in your life. The pain is the signal and Git exists for you. Once it clicks, it's absolutely life-changing. Appreciate all the support lately, guys. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions. Good luck with your projects. Good luck with version control. Good luck learning Git and setting up your GitHub profile. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.